Hi friends, good news. I got my van back and we're gonna go for a ride today, but uh, I got something else to share with you that's gonna be even more special. Good morning, Lynn. Good morning, Jerry. Como esta hoy? Bien. Gracias. Está bien. And the surprise is that our friend Brian is in town. So I'm gonna take him along on our ride around town today, doing a couple of chores and just doing things and taking you into the neighborhood like I promised, but it'll be good because uh, Brian and I can just talk about it. And he's kind of new in town, so uh, me telling him my old stories will just be fun. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Hey, Jerry. So do you want to tell us anything about Brian? Well, I just want to thank you and Lynn both for uh, inviting me here and uh, after many years of uh, watching your show there on YouTube, uh, it was really cool to be down in this area. And I have explored Mexico a couple of times, but uh, never the actual Ajijic, Lake Chapala area. And uh, I've been here a little over a week, uh, stay a few more probably, and I've really, really enjoyed the place. Can uh, see, you know, why this place is so magical. So uh, I've really enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to our ride today and to learn a little bit more about certain areas of the town. Well, I'm looking forward to going. Let's go for a ride. Sounds good. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Our first stop is going to be at uh, Casa Aurora, which is where Brian is staying. And then we're going to, I think we'll drive up into Chula Vista. It's a nice neighborhood. Honest, don't you have a better quality of life here? I mean, really? Well, I don't know. Living in that RV and with all my RV friends and pretty cool my too. son's ranch and stuff, it's it's a pretty sweet deal. Well, I think that you, I think but it's not work a, out. It's not a long-term deal for, you know, I mean, I'm 78, <coughs> I'm 78 years old and I think I got another 10 years, maybe that might be a pie in the sky, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking at my mother and my father, Yeah. and um, I think I'm, I think good I'm, genes. I think I'm good for another 10 years, but maybe not driving a 40 foot motor. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm still totally comfortable doing it at this point, but. The only thing is, you know, we might want to park here and walk up. I don't know if you'll find a parking spot. For some reason, it's a busy little street. If not, we can circle around and park there anyway, but try it. Oh, yeah, there's parking. Wow. <laughs> How do you get so lucky? It's the next block. If you want to park right here, oh, that's a garage. You can. Might be a spot in front of this red vehicle. Uh, oh, you see that? It, it's huge. Yeah, they park this. Oh, you can park right there. Where are we no, going? no, that's a. Where are we going? We're going right here. But you can park in front of this truck. Oh, Casa Aurora. Look at that. Well, <laughs> you haven't hound around with me long enough to know oh, that. I'm going to keep you with me. The universe takes care of Jerry. Yeah. And I always park in front of the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to believe it. I got this rule made up. Is uh, Merv Griffiths uh, Crystal Palace Casino. Oh my goodness! In uh, Nassau in the Bahamas. Right. I was watching this lady playing a $500 uh -oh, and machine. Yeah. And she's sitting there on a stool, hitting play three. Play three. Play three. That's $1,500. Yeah. It's a $500 token machine. And she hit a hundred times. Wow. And I'm going, is my math right? That's that's, that's $50,000. Yeah, yeah. That's $50,000. Right, right. And you know what she does? She, so, takes, she makes no note of it and hits play three. Wow. So I'm thinking about this later. I'm thinking, okay, so I'm playing a nickel machine, and I hit 100 times. That's $5. I don't get excited. Right. And I probably work harder for a nickel than she did that five hundred dollars. That's right. That's right. So and that's when I said, okay, if I'm ever up, I'm quitting. I don't care how much it is or how little it is. I played uh, blackjack with Bob Barker in the Bahamas. Really? 
at the yeah at the uh, casino in the Bahamas. This is probably 15 years ago. Bob Barker, and he was not a very nice person. Well, careful what you say because Bob Barker is part of my family. Well, I really liked it. <laughs> I loved I loved this game show and I watched it every day. <laughs> but in person, he, he, he wasn't nice. He was not nice. I mean, he wasn't cruel to me, but he was to other people. Uh, I'm going to tell you the Bob Barker story. Bob Barker, whose name was actually Billy Barker, um, and his mother Tilly, uh, lived in Mission, South Dakota, where I grew up. And they lived in the hotel that my grandfather owned. Wow. And um, Tilly was my mom and dad's teacher. She taught third grade. And when Bob Barker was a little kid, uh, my dad used to love to tell the story about sneaking up behind him. My dad was a teenager, sneaking up behind him and jerking his pants down as he stood in front of the floor-to-ceiling picture windows out <laughs> to the street. But uh, my grandmother was uh, uh, Bob Barker's godmother. I'll be darn. And. Um, all of her life, and she lived well into her 90s, 98. Uh, every birthday, she got a, a messages, and years ago it was telegrams. From him. Dated the story a little bit there. And from all the famous people in Hollywood, she's gotten a telegram from wow. people. And all, all, all put up by, you know, Bob Barker and his friends. But, uh, yeah, there's a... Back in the 19, uh, early 1960s, I'm going up here, I want to tell you about some of these houses. Back in the 1960s, in Life magazine, there was an article about uh, Bob Barker and his success. And in the magazine, there's a picture of him standing with his foot up on the running board of a 1935 Chevy. Wow. And it's my dad's car, and my dad took the picture. Get out! How cool is that? Anyway, Bob Barker, yeah, it's like family. But I've never met him, and he wouldn't know me from Adam, but... But, boy, you really did... Have so a I have a story, and I've told this on my YouTube channel before, this story, about this house here and the construction of it. The guy that built him, his name is Franz, he's from Switzerland. Franz owned a, a slick... Uh, cover fashion magazine in Europe and uh, he came here and he built this and the story about Franz he's Swiss so everything has to be perfect like a Swiss watch right the story about him is standing on the scaffolding handing each of those black and white tiles to the order. to the guy that was pasting them on holy <laughs> shit picking them out making sure they were either perfect or or, or perfectly positioned so that's the story about Franz. Franz. Uh, Fra Franz and another friend of his who's also Swiss. Uh, the three of us used to hang around. They made me an honorary member of the Swiss Mafia. Right. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> right. But and I didn't get any like badge or certificate or anything. But I, I still like telling the story about. Hanging out with them, right? Being part of the Swiss Mafia. Yeah. So oh. this is Upper Chula Vista. Okay, Upper Chula Vista. Yeah. And then... And are these Mexicans or... These are... There There are uh, expats who live up here, immigrants. Right. But um, it's kind of a high-end area. Uh-huh. There are places up here owned by NBA basketball players. Wow. There are places up here owned by uh, Chinese billionaires. There are uh, that big white thing that we saw the other day when we were going down the road. Mm -hmm. That sold for $3 million uh, several years ago.
that uh, White House we were just talking about is, oh, it's for sale. Oh, for rent. is right here. We're at the top of it. Oh my gosh. It's sometimes been referred to as the Taj Mahal of Mexico. Yeah, they stole your, uh, they stole your color. Yeah. That's pretty too. Numero uno. <laughs> yeah, numero uno. I guess if you can... Uh, wow. It's called the Palace of the Sun. Palacio del Sol. Now, do you know who owns that? No, I don't. I guess if you can afford that, you can uh, pick your own house number. I would say. House number one. Oh, my squeaky steering wheel. Do you hear it squeaking? Yeah. It's a YouTube thing. People love it or they hate it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, I'm going to back up here. You get that shot. Well, I'm going to use my phone and I'm going to... Take a picture. Talk about something here. So we stopped here. We're in Upper Chula Vista. And if you look across the ravine there, the ravine is the golf course. And then over there, that's on the north side of the Libramento. And all of that housing development you see going up the hill is called Chula Vista Norte can't build much above that because it's called Ijito land. It belongs to the Indian tribe. That's what we call it in the United States. we got different names for that kind of stuff here. And by the way, before you give me a bad time about calling them Indians, remember I grew up on the Rosebud Indian Reservation in South Dakota. And my relatives still say, ah, Jerry, we're still Indians. This is a nice place. Black. So these houses here, if you look at them from down there. That's a good shot. You can see down to the lake. These houses stick out like uh, baby bottles when you're looking at them from down below, and they're called the baby bottle houses. Mm. Can you get out and shut that? No, it's probably automatic, so it'll have a motor on it. I think I'm okay. You're fine on my side. We're going to go up here after we turn this corner. We're going to go to the highest house in Chula Vista. That's a beautiful one there on the right. This house up at the end of the road used to belong to some friends of ours. Okay, so I want to tell you about this house right here. That house right there used to belong to a friend of mine. And it's beautiful. He's moved back to the States, doesn't live there anymore, but we spent a lot of time in that house and uh, the view is unbelievable. The house itself is unbelievable and the property goes way up the hill and he's got a walkway that goes way out around the hills to a little um, lookout. A little, uh, what do you call it? Pergola. And it looks like they might have done two houses now. No. That, no, it's always oh. been a separate house. His property goes way back that way and way up the hill. Okay. That fence up there would be his. See? Gotcha. Way up there. Anyway, he used to walk way out there to that little uh, pavilion. Look at that cactus, Jerry. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Wow. He had a four-wheeler like my ATV, mm. and he and I went through this gate one time, and we went way up the hill to that tower way up there. Mm. It's a communications tower. And we got yelled at big time. We weren't supposed to be up there. <laughs> anyway, he and his wife were neat people. She was Cajun. She was what? Cajun. Cajun. I used to... I miss her Cajun cooking a lot. I bet. Well, we used to joke, people would come to my house and They'd be staying with me for a week or so. They'd be getting ready to leave. I call up my friends and say, uh, hey, can I can I bring my guests up? See your house? 
yeah, sure, come on up. Oh. We come up, and the, the the joke, and not really a joke, was always... That's a beautiful. He's got to have the most amazing view of the whole place. Yeah, it's amazing. Right, that yeah, house. It, it is amazing. He yeah. sees all the way from Chapala to that way. Right. So what, I'm sorry, finish? Yeah, oh, the joke was always, well, I don't bring people up here when they first come to my house because they always like my house until they see this one. <laughs> Well, you've got a little piece of paradise, let me tell you. You absolutely have created something special. Very, very special. We uh, we looked at a house that I really wanted to buy up here when, before we bought ours. And it was this one right here. Oh, wow. No, I'm sorry. It wasn't that one right there. I couldn't afford that one. It's the next one down the hill. Wow. It's beautiful, too. It, it had a little bit of a view off towards the mountains, but no lake view. And uh, it came with an extra lot down here, which now seems to be for sale. Wow. <laughs> so 20 years ago, that was still just an extra lot. Probably still is. It was, the owner's just trying to sell. They probably bought it, it together. Was, it was beautiful inside, but the marble floors oh. had cracks from the moving down the hills. So oh wow! It was recommended to me that I would be. I need to be real careful about that. Right. This house, Tons for all the 20 years I've been here, has never been completed. Just is a, a building project that never got finished. Right. Somebody ran out of money or uh -huh. died or someone will get lucky and family, get a good fam property. Family got in an argument. Well, right. It appears that the walls got been recently painted outside. Uh huh. I don't know. But it's it's quite a structure up in the up in there. The other thing about not buying a house up here, Lynn had an absolute fit about driving up the hill. Right. I'll be honest, I like your location a ton better. As pretty as this is, I don't think I'd want to live here. This has always been amusing to me. It's like the guy's, he's pushing the envelope. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be, can't build out into the street, right? Right. Yep, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he is pushing the envelope. <clears throat> All of this property to the left <clears throat> and right where we turned was the beginning of it. See that big stone wall up there? Yeah. This gate here. All the way up to the corner here is one property. And when we get up here, I'll tell you the rest of the story about it. If you get clear up here to the top, you'll see that you know what? It's broken down. This is the top of that huge property. And it used to be a Chinese arch, like you were walking into Chinatown. And the story about it was that a Chinese couple bought it like 30 years ago and have never been here. I think it's been sold and divided up into several properties, but. I'm sorry to see that the uh, the Chinese part of it it's not there anymore. There's another thing over there on the hill. Mm. I'm going to stop here and take a picture of it with my phone. So over there on the hill, you can see the road going up. The story a few years ago was that they were building a, a Las Vegas style casino up there. And uh, something happened. It's uh, just been no improvements for several years. A lot of people were all up in airs about them cutting that road up there and, you know, destroying the view of the landscape and whatever. I, uh, I don't know what happened to it, but that's why there's a road that goes up the hill there. And that's on the other side of the Libramento. I and a friend drove up there to that first house. That it's actually a guard shack, right up there. When they were first doing the road, and they stopped us and wouldn't let us go up any farther. Have you ever been up here? 
you experienced an earthquake? Problem. Yes. Bad? Well, pretty bad. Sloshed water out of my pool. Oh, that's right. I do remember something you said about that. Um, it was a 4.8 uh, about 50 miles away. Huh. Uh, between here and Mount Kalima. I don't even think you a Was there any... There wasn't any damage. But it didn't look like the uh, he suffered tremendously. No. There was an earthquake fault between here and Guadalajara. It's, it's right over the hill by East Um That's beautiful. There's a place in the, the um, uh, highway. I'm trouble with my English. Carretera. There's a place where there's always a hump. I, mean, I used to tell people if I'm going in my van, put your hand on the ceiling, ceiling. because otherwise you're going to fly out of the seat and hit right. the head. It's an earthquake fault. Huh. And they fix it over and over and over the years and it buckles again. It doesn't really buckle the asphalt, but it, it sinks or rises enough that you notice it when you're driving over it. Gotcha. I think that'll make today's video. Uh, this is Upper Chula Vista that we've been driving around in. Um, we'll check out some other neighborhoods real soon. Thanks for being with us today. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.